So welcome back everyone to week three of our four week sew along. We're getting there and we're doing two more pillow fronts this week. The first one is actually gonna be all about applique and we're gonna create this applique in the Designer Epic 3. So you're gonna learn how to do that, but also just what an applique means, what, how it actually works in embroidery. So we're gonna start in embroidery. And then for the, our second pillow top, it's shrinking fabric and motif builders. So we've got a couple different techniques, some really fun things, especially with the shrinking fabric. If you've never used this, it's really fun. And motif builder, we're gonna do a sequence for this. So let's get going. We're gonna start with our applique. So we're gonna start with our applique and uh, start in an embroidery. So get ready, here we go. To get started with our applique, we are going to do this in the Designer Epic 3, and there's some super easy and, and wonderful to do. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to talk about the steps. So let's get it created first. So now let's go ahead and go over to the screen and start with our embroidery. Now let's create our applique. I'm going to go into the embroidery mode. And once we have the embroidery mode on, we're gonna go ahead and come in and choose Create Applique at the bottom. So it's really fast and easy to do that. Once we choose Create Applique, then we're going to choose, actually we're gonna start with a circle, but the circle itself we're going to make into an oval. So now that I've got my circle on the screen, one of the fun things is, is we are going to use the scaling icon and unlock the scaling. And what that means is I can make it either, like I can squish it either way. I can make it either smaller or larger in the, the height and or the width. So that's what's actually cool about this. So for the width, you can play around with this, but I know for this particular purpose, I'm gonna actually choose 105 millimeters. And look what happened. It just made this a little bit more like an oval. And then for the vertical number, what we're gonna do is we're going to put it in at 135. So now I've got this pretty oval for our applique. But something else that is new and really very nice for a Designer Epic 3, we've always had like candle wick stitches or satin stitches for the outside of our applique. But what I'm going to do is now I can actually choose a specific stitch. So let's come here. Now I can't use every stitch, but I can use most stitches on my Designer Epic 3. So I'm going to come back to the satin and scallop stitches, this guy right here. And I'm gonna choose the third menu. And then we're gonna scroll down until we see stitch number 12. This is actually a really pretty stitch. Here's the thing when you're looking at this, there's only one. So what we need to do now is we need to fill around this whole applique with this particular stitch. So here's, it's talking about repeats. So I'm gonna actually repeat and what you're seeing, can you see that? How it's putting in stitch by stitch by stitch. Well, this could take a while the first time, but once we know, I can come in and just touch that centerpiece and I know that I need 40 of these stitches. So I'm simply gonna touch 40 and check it out. It filled in the whole applique. So once you figure out that number, you can come close. Usually what I do is I'll put like, I'll put 35 and see where I'm at. So, and then just add until I get to the proper numbers. So right there, all 40, that is my applique. So it's super, again, super easy, super to do, super easy to do this. Once I have this, I'm just gonna put a little check mark here. And what that did is that brought this into my sewing or my embroidery screen. So now I have my applique in my sewing screen. And then we're going to put in our initial. So I'm going to choose our fonts. And we have a lot of beautiful, you can look here, a lot of beautiful so, uh, embroidery fonts to choose from. 
What I want to do is I'm going to choose a very large font and we're going to choose a UC. What UC means is that's uppercase. So this is an uppercase font in a size 80. So that is actually almost three inches. So that's a really nice size font. And then just choose, I'm going to choose the first letter of my last name, the letter G. And let's close that out. You can see that right here. I'm going to close that down. And with the letter G, I want this to be in the center of my applique. I can move it around. I can get this and notice as I'm doing that moving, you can see I've got guidelines to make sure I'm going to get into the center, but I'm going to show you something a little bit easier. Simply going to touch right in the middle and pop right in the center. So that is going to put it center of the hoop, which is the center of our applique. Once we have this set like this, everyone, we're ready to stitch out. We can change colors later. Um, actually, I often, sometimes I don't even change colors because I know I want this to be a, a certain color, that to be a certain color. But now I'm gonna touch embroidery stitch out here. And in embroidery stitch out, you're gonna see there's a, this is, I, I talk about this as, this is just making sure I have the right things. So do I have the right hoop? I need the 240 by 150 hoop. Do I have on my sensor Q foot, that sort of thing. In this case, I want to merge every single one of those 40 stitches. So remember, we put in 40 stitches. When I merge them, they'll be done without stopping after every color stop or every, every stitch. If I don't do that, what's going to happen is after every single stitch, and I'll go ahead and put that on, after every stitch, it's going to um, stop and make you start again, stop and start again. So by merging, you don't have to do that. So we're ready to stitch out. Let's go ahead and see what that's gonna look like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the hoop. And remember from our last session, or our last week actually, we talked about hooping and making sure that you have, again, a nice stable surface that you hoop on. This is a little bit bigger hoop, so you wanna make sure that you are standing and making sure that you hoop properly. And instead of marking this time, what I went ahead and did is I just ironed. So I just have markings for um, my center pieces here. So I have my center here and center here in my hoop. So I went ahead and I just pressed that. So that's right there. To go ahead and put this on my, uh, on my machine, I, first I wanna make sure that my needle's all the way up. And then it's super easy to just snap that on. So I just went ahead and put that uh, hoop on. Now, remember from last time, again, I was already set up for embroidery because I knew that's what I was doing first. But if you need help uh, putting on your embroidery uh, presser foot, so that sensor Q foot, you can go ahead and either watch last week or there is information in the machine. So either way, the Epic 3 will give you that information or you can uh, check it out again from last week's uh, video. So now that I've got my hoop on, I do want to come over here for just a moment because I want to explain to you what happens when you do an applique. And I'm going to just use this edge of the machine. When you do an applique, one of the interesting things is it's going to do what's called a placement line. That's what this little circle is. And with that placement line, what that is doing is saying, hey, this is where you need to put your applique fabric. So you're just gonna add your applique fabric at that point. Step two is actually gonna stitch down the applique fabric, and then you're gonna trim that out. And then step three is putting your decorative stitch around it. So there are three steps whenever you're doing an applique. So let's go ahead and do step one and step two in the machine so you can see what it looks like in real life. So. I've got everything from what we did before. So that, you know, we had that on the screen already. So I have my hoop on, make sure that's in place. I've got my um, thread, decorative sewing thread on top and the bobbin thread ready to go. And I'm just gonna press start, stop. And when I do that, it's just gonna start the embroidery. And again, this is what we talked about. This is the placement line. So this is where I need to place my fabric. Okay. 
when it gets done, okay, so when it gets done here, I'm just going to place the fabric from the back. So I'm going to place the fabric from the back here. And I want to make sure that I've got that lined up over everything. So you also know, I was a little bit worried that I might have cut my fabric a little too small, but check that out. You also know exactly how much fabric you need. So make sure you have that right there. Then we're going to press start stop again, and that's going to put my fabric down. So here we go. That's and notice I'm just kind of very carefully making sure that I don't have any puckers in my fabric. And it puts that down nice and easy. And don't be afraid, it's gonna go back. It's gonna do this twice because we really want this fabric to be stitched down well. And it's even doing a little bitty zigzag stitch over the top. So this is gonna hold my applique fabric. So it's really gonna hold the applique fabric. Make sure it's in the right, again, the right place, right everything for you. Okay, so that was step two. So remember from our little, our little example before, right? Step one was the placement. Step two was the stitch down. So those were those. Now what I wanna do is on the screen, and I'm just gonna go to the hoop position and there's something that's called trim position. Check this out. It just moves the hoop forward for me. Just touch trim position and now, I know you know, I've already used these, um, these great scissors before, I love these, but this is where they really come into play. Super sharp scissors. And I'm just gonna get really close and be careful so you don't get your, uh, don't wanna get your stitching. And we're just gonna get really super close here. And then come back around. And a lot of people, when they do applique, they like the duck bill. If you have the duck bill scissors, those also work very well. I tend to like these because I can get in a little bit closer. Um, but again, your preference. But what you're seeing is I'm getting in super, super close. And I'm not gonna do the finish the whole applique, but what I wanna share with you before we do this, get in there really nice and close. The beautiful thing is now I'm gonna go back to current stitch position and I'm ready to finish out. So really it's that easy to do an applique. Your Designer Epic 3 is going to create the applique for you. And then when I press start stop, We'll just get it going just a little bit so you can see what it's gonna look like. It's gonna do that decorative stitch along that outside edge. And there we go, so that was stitch number one. But because we use the merge, it's actually gonna go ahead and keep on going. So I didn't actually have to um, stop, I didn't have to press start again. I'm gonna press start one more time. Start stop one more time though, because I did forget something and I wanna give you this little bit of information. You can hear that my Designer Epic 3 is actually cutting. So I actually want to turn the thread cutter off. So that's something that when you go through that one little screen that we looked at, you wanna turn your thread cutter off because that way you don't have it stopping and cutting after every stitch, all right? So I forgot, that I neglected that. You want to make sure to do that. So make a little note in your instructions because you want to turn off the thread cutter. And once you get done, I'm just going to let it go to that. And once you get done, what, what you're going to see is you're going to have your beautiful um, initial in the center. You've got your applique. It's that easy. We love that our embroidery machines, especially the Epic 3, it's going to create this beautiful embroidery for you. So everyone, it's that simple. You're going to finish this out. Once you get that done, you're done with your third pillow front and we're getting ready to go on to our fourth one, which is the shrinking fabric. So we're gonna stay in embroidery 
and choose a different stitch. So let's go ahead and come out of embroidery stitch out mode. Gonna, gonna, just gonna follow what my designer Epic 3 tells me. So I'm gonna remove the hoop. And I'm just gonna move that hoop right over there and touch okay. And once I've removed the hoop, then I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything that's on the screen. So now that I've got a fresh screen, let's go ahead and choose our new stitch or our new embroidery. And that embroidery is in the bronze collection. And when you're using the shrinking fabric, because this is what we're gonna stitch over the shrinking fabric, you want to design, and it's a little hard to see, but when I touch it, I'm gonna use bronze collection number 58. And with this design, and check it out. Let's go ahead and make sure that gets back into the center. It's like a grid. So the shrinking fabric works great with something like a grid because you want the fabric to be able to, um, this usually isn't a good term, but pucker up. We want it to make sure to shrink and have some texture to it. So this is the design we're going to use. We're going to use the 360 by 200 hoops. So we're going to use a really big hoop and create this fun fabric for our next pillow top. So once we have this ready to go, we're just going to press stitch out. And once I press stitch out, it's going to have me put the hoop on. So let's go ahead and get our hoop ready. And then we can uh, come back and I'll just press stitch out to uh, when we're ready to go. All right. So now we're ready. I'm just going to put my other hoop behind me and show you this is the hoop we're going to use. This is one of our new super large hoops for our designer epic threes so this is the hoop we're going to use and what you want to do is the shrinking fabric is really pretty interesting it's this it feels like almost like a satin but it's a very special fabric so you're going to hoop you're going to get this big enough you're going to hoop this with your the fabric that you're going to use for your um, shrinking and you're going to go ahead and hoop this just like we've done before so Everybody, you want to make sure it fills up the whole hoop. And when you get done, I'm not going to do that today. And the main reason why is this is a little bit longer stitch out. So I don't want you to have to sit here and watch the stitch out. We've already done it. So we're going to go ahead. This is what we've done. And at this point, we're all ready to go. We've got the shrinking fabric behind. We've got our embroidery on front. And we're ready to take this to the iron. So now that we're at the steam iron, you do need a steam iron to make the shrinking fabric work. The other thing that's really important, I'm gonna flip this over. You can see how my fabric is pretty nice and flat. It's not real wrinkly. In class, we've had people do this. Do not take your shrinking fabric to an iron and try and press it. it it's okay to be wrinkled a little bit because it will not work. I mean, you don't want to iron this at all. So remember, the shrinking fabric, it is going to do something with heat. So just be careful about that. All right, so now we are here at the steam iron. I'm going to go ahead and just take my, my steam iron here. Take that iron. You can see how it's starting to just shrink up. Can you all see that? I'm not going to do the whole thing. We've got to be pretty close, but once you get that started, check this out. Isn't that fun? Oh my gosh, that is just so cool. You can see the back part. I didn't put the steam to it. So this way you can see how wonderful that just shrinks up. Now you can see why we talked a little bit about, or I talked a little bit about the grid, right? The grid makes this work because it lets the fabric get all shrunk up between the grids. So you can actually do quilting, you can do channel quilting, you can do X's, you can do even decorative stitches, but you need to leave room, okay? So you need to leave room so the fabric shrinks up a little bit. So that's what's really important about the shrinking fabric, okay? So you don't wanna touch the shrinking fabric, but you do need to get that steam close enough so it'll actually shrink up. So once you have your whole piece ready to go, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add some piping to this, okay? So we're gonna add some piping to this. 
Now with the piping, we're using the mini piping and mini piping foot. You can purchase piping or you can make your own piping. And we are going to use a little glue stick. So remember at the very beginning, we talked about using the glue stick. With this grid, we figured out that we need to be like right next to the little edge here. And we're gonna put our piping right like this and we're gonna glue this down. So we're gonna get a little bit of glue right in here. And I'm probably not gonna glue down everything, but I wanna make sure that I'm doing that. And by the way, I'm being very kind of cavalier here. I say that uh, I'm, I'm using a glue stick right on my machine. I probably should be doing this in front, but it's a little harder for me to get used to that or to, to get there. So I am going to use this, but please be careful when you're using the glue stick next to your machines and especially on the embroidery machine like that. So can you I think you can see really easy? Here's my first bit of piping. We did this here. And then my next piping, I'm making sure that the piping itself is to the inside. So I'm making sure that that's to the inside. A little bit of glue here. And I'm putting that right on the edge of where, see where those little leaves are, the little petals of my flower. So just wanna make sure you're kind of seeing that's where those pieces are. Is right on the edge. So you're going to glue all of that down. Okay, so you're going to glue all of this down. And once you have this glued down, we're ready to stitch this on our Designer Epic 3. So we're going to use what's called the mini piping foot. And with this little mini piping foot, it's a clear foot and it has a great groove right in the back. It's kind of hard to see the groove because of the clear, but it has this great groove in the back and that's gonna run over the piping. So it makes it easy and it keeps it right in place. So that's a really nice little thing that this foot is gonna do. So I went ahead and changed out from my embroidery foot. Again, last, uh, last week or last session, we actually did that on camera. So if you need to, uh, Get, get a refresher course on that. You can either look in the information on the machine or you can go ahead and uh, just look at the video from last week. And so now that I have my piping foot on, all I'm gonna do is I am going to choose to go back to a straight stitch. And with that straight stitch, I do like to, um, I do like to use a, 2.5 stitch length, that's again, average stitch length for most fabrics. So I wanna go ahead and use that. I'm going to come around and I'm going, because I glued, this piece was a little bit, um, glued a little bit easier. I'm just going to drop my presser foot. And now that I have that presser foot down, because I'm using the mini piping foot, it is perfect for that great straight stitch. So I don't have to move my needle position. Sometimes with different feet, you might have to move a needle position or if you're using a, a zipper foot for your piping. But once we have this set, let's go ahead and I'm just going to stitch this down. So again, really super easy. That groove is fabulous for the piping. Just keep that right in place. When you get to the end, I just I get so very spoiled with those, those thread snips, that's for sure. And now let's come back going to do the other side on this one piece. So I'm just going to finish this side so you all can see how that kind of works. And straight stitch, I guess at this point, I'm trying to be really super straight. So I, uh, I'm concentrating really hard to make sure that I get that set up properly. And get down to that end. Thank you. 
So hopefully what you can see is, isn't that, it's super easy again to use the mini piping foot. Go ahead and put your piping down. Once you have everything stitched, so let's say these were stitched, we're gonna go ahead and get our nice sharp pair of scissors and we're gonna cut this in half. And I'm gonna let this be for now. Um, you wanna get both of the pipings done first, but right now I'm just gonna do the one and we are truly going to cut this in half. And I'm just gonna cut straight down that center part. So I just cut straight down that center part, okay? So now you have two pieces. And if you remember from the beginning, right? We were talking about this. So this is our shrinking fabric. We have our two pieces with our piping. Our next step, everyone, our next step is actually to create this decorative motif builder stitch. So we're gonna do that in sequence. And once we have that done, then we're gonna put it all together to finish this top. So again, the shrinking fabric, really fun. Let's go ahead, we're gonna go back to the screen here and I'm gonna show you how to do this sequencing. Um, there are a couple different ways to work with motif builders. So I wanna show that to you on screen. And the other little thing is the motif builder is really fun, but there are lots of decorative stitches. So if you choose that, maybe you're gonna use an Omnimotion stitch, one that goes back and forth, you can do that too. So lots of options, but let's check out this motif builder because this is gonna give you a really nice look. So to start our motif builder strip, we're going to go into create sequence. And with create sequence, sequence, what this allows us to do is do a group of stitches in a row. With the motif builder, we're gonna come all the way to the end of our stitches, or really close. And we're gonna use what's called the building blocks. And the building blocks have several different things in it, one of them being the motif that we're going to use. So I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. And by the way, if I wanna make this a little bit bigger, I can do that so I can see more stitches all at once. I actually want stitch number 23. And this is what we're going to work with to build our stitch. With this, what happens with the motif builder is, or excuse me, with the um, motif stitches is it's going to do one stitch and it's gonna stop. And there's a stop built into the stitch. Well, that's really wonderful, but the neat thing is, is we can program a bunch in, put a thread cut, and then it's going to stop when we want it to. So here we go, let's go ahead. I'm just going to do, Did you? if you notice, if I touch this little um, icon, it's the copy icon, it's going to give me one stitch at a time. Well, I actually have done this and I know that I need 20 of these stitches. I have two on screen. So let's touch and hold this. I'm gonna to touch in, actually now I have three on screen, so let's check this out. We're just gonna put in 18, which is what I'm expecting. So not 81, let's go back. We're gonna do 18, there we go, and I'm gonna to touch okay. And how I know if this is the proper number is I know that that stitch is supposed to be 176 millimeters. Well, this one says 184. So that means I have one too many stitch. So I'm just gonna touch the delete. And now it says 176. So again, super easy. If you get too many, you just delete it right out of there. Once I have that done, I'm simply going to put in a thread snip. That's gonna key my designer Epic 3 to stop and to cut when I get to 20 of these uh, motif builder stitches. So once I have that programmed in, let's just touch the check mark. It's gonna come up on screen. I'm gonna close this so we can see this. And now it tells me to use the S presser foot. So we're gonna put that on. And then we're just gonna go ahead and sew this. Now, before I get going, I do want to use projection. Okay, so I do wanna make sure that I'm using projection. This helps me. So I'm gonna turn the projection on and my projection options. I'm gonna take off the stitch preview because this, again, that gets a little bit confusing. I'm gonna leave the grid and the stitch guide. And those two are going to allow me to 
to stitch this out perfectly. And then I'm just going to close the screen. So I've got that right there. So we're ready to stitch out at this point. So let's go ahead and come back to uh, the machine so we can actually see where we're going to stitch and how we're going to stitch it out. So now we're ready to stitch out the motif builder for the center part of our pillow front. And with this, what's going to happen is I went ahead and I put on the S presser foot already. So that's already on. And the projection is going to help us because when I put that presser foot down, make sure that is aligned with my marking in the back. And every stitch, so every motif builder, let's do one. What you're going to see that's going to happen is when you get to the end, it's actually going to stop for you. So it's actually going to stop and make sure that you're able to line up. So every time the stitch builder does one stitch, it's actually going to stop again and make sure that you can align and you can make sure everything is lined up. So what we're going to do is this is going to take 20 different stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. And then when I come back, we can, you'll see what it's going to look like at the very end when I stop. So we're getting close to the end. And what you're going to end up seeing is once we get to that ending spot, my motif is going to stop. So it is going to go ahead and stop. But then the next time it comes around, instead of actually making a stitch, what's going to happen is it's going to actually do the thread cut. So see that? So that means I have exactly 20 of my motif builders and it's finished. So that's the reason why we love that with the sequencing. So our next step is to come back and we're going to simply touch mirror image on the screen. And this is again, where it's really kind of great how the projection works, because I can come in here and I can put my needle down just right where our previous stitching was. So where we started with our previous stitching, press our foot down and guess what? I'm just gonna go ahead and start sewing. When the motif builder comes to the end, and it stops, you can align, you can make any adjustments that's ne that are needed. So that makes it super easy to do our stitching. And when you get done with that stitching, what's really cool is it's gonna finish out like this. So you, you can go ahead and once you get that finished, you've got this great crisscross look and it's so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to do the rest of this. You guys can do the rest of this at home to finish out your um, motif building. And we are almost ready, everybody, to finish this up. So we only have the putting of this together. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but uh, we're going to put it all together now. And we're going to use the center, the two pieces that we did with the shrinking fabric, and then two little edge pieces. So we're almost there. So let's bring all of these together. So here are our pieces. And with the edge pieces, it really is simple. Let, let's make sure. So I've got one piece here. I've got my shrinking fabrics here. I've got this in the center and this on the side. All right, so it's these five pieces will make up this pillow front. And you may need to trim things up a little bit. You are welcome to do that. It says that in the instructions so you can see how much you need to trim up and make sure that these are the proper sizes. But the cool thing is, let's just do this on this one piece so you can see how we're gonna stitch this together. So I'm just gonna bring this back over here. And basically, I'm gonna go back to my normal straight stitch. So I'm just gonna grab my normal straight stitch and with the normal straight stitch, again, two and a half stitch length is nice. Um, some people, again, for this one, I would not go any larger um, if I was doing it. I wouldn't go any larger. 
And what you can see right here is we're going to stitch again right near, right where that piping is. So I'm going to stitch. This is going to be flipped over here. So we've got right sides together. I went ahead and there's a couple little pins in here. And we're just going to stitch. And you can, something that might make it a little bit easier, is to use that mini piping foot again because that will help guide you in the right place. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my projection for this because I don't need that grid line for this. And so once I have this set, you can either glue or you can go ahead and pin. And then we're just going to set this presser foot down. And you can feel right there, you can feel right where that piping is. So start take a couple stitches. And when I get ready to go, there we go. So you can see, and I'm going to be real careful if you do pin this, make sure that you take out your pins as you go. I'm just going to sew right along. Again, I'm going to take out the pins just as I'm going, making sure that my piping is running right in that groove of that great little mini piping foot. And then let's continue on, making sure everything is aligned as you go. And once we get, you can just feel it. You can tell I've got my finger right there. I can just feel as I'm going where that piping is. And then once I get finished here, that you're going to be able to see that. See how cute that is. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Right there, you've got your piping right on the edge of your um, piece of white fabric. You're going to then add your motif builder. Then you're going to add your next piece of uh, shrinking fabric and then your other piece on the edge. So everyone, this is our last, I can't believe it. This is our last pillow front. So next week, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it all together. We're going to do buttonholes and we're going to do some binding and just finish up. So then you'll have four different pillow fronts. You'll have your great pillow and then we'll, you'll be ready for uh, what, wherever you want to place it in your home. So come back next week. We're going to finish everything up.